Coming up today, we have a very special interview with a very special person, Robert Scoble. If you know him, you love him. If you don't know him, you'll love him after this. Buckle up, everyone. You are strapped in and ready for the Insurance Hour with me, your host, Carl Sussman, informing, educating, and entertaining Californians one policy at a time. This is Insurance Hour. Hello, hello, everyone. Today, we have a very special show and a very special guest who needs no introduction, yet I will do it anyway. We have Robert Scoble, who is here with us, and we're going to talk we're going to talk shop, and we're going to talk about tech, and we're going to talk about how that the intersection between some technology-related issues and, believe it or not, insurance comes to bear. Because let's face it, it uh, there everything that affects technology affects insurance. I just saw a video of someone the other day that was <laughs> that was driving around with a with the Vision Pro on, and so I'm thinking, Ooh. hmm, okay, well, was he in a Tesla? He was in a Tesla, of course, right? He, he was he was definitely a cult member. And he member. might not get into the uh, accident, but, uh, you know. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I he still don't recommend on. doing that because it does have a little bit of latency and you can't see your peripheral. I know. Uh, you know what's crazy about it is that the if you look at the people like, like you and I, I've got the Tesla, I've got the Vision Pro. We, 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 we all have the same stuff. You know, when yeah. we had these major storms in California and everyone was, you know, power out, there were over, almost, over half a million people without power. Well, I had my Tesla battery, you know, running and I had my Starlink internet running. So I just kept on going. So it, it's one of those things. But again, I want to welcome you. I appreciate you being here today. And I, I want to, I just sort of pepper you with a couple of, that's right. I'm just going to bring it on. Before I do anything, I have to try and remember, Robert and I met. Okay. I'm trying to see who has got a better memory. It was a I, birthday. It was a birth. It was one of your birthday parties. It was when I when I came up there and you had. It was when you were in when the hint um, water was all the rage. Yeah, it was that part. Now, how many years ago was that? Because I was trying to remember uh, and I couldn't. I I had a two birthday parties. One at fifty and fifty one. So yeah, all right. That was like eight or nine years ago. Oh my gosh, that long ago. Yeah, I, I I remember I remember I drove up for it and uh, the the gal with the the fire red hair I guess she's the CEO of the company and yeah, she was there yeah. and and she, yeah and and there was hint water everywhere yeah. and I, I've been I've been on the hint water cult ever since too yeah so. me too <laughs> <laughs> it uh, I tell you and uh, it, it's funny how you remember certain things but I it, it struck me right as as a big deal. So let's let's chit chat a little bit about it. Obviously, the the Vision Pro is 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 the thing to talk about. And yeah. when you jumped on, you were wearing it on your head, and I of course said, yeah. you know, I got to keep mine, you know, in its case because if I take it out during the day, I I won't put it. Yeah, I won't take it off again. That's the problem. I didn't right? even get a case because I'm gonna beat the hell out of this thing, right? And right, right. that's part of it. It's like. Um, it's something that you don't want to wear all day long, right? I, I, first of all, your eyes get tired. If it, it's a little bit heavy, right? There's something on your head, right? Yeah, it, yeah. It's not optimal for a whole lot of things. Um, but yeah, this you're going to be taking it on and off a lot, and so I, I, it's real interesting how much engineering they put into keeping it, um, into making it. Pretty re re reliable looking, at least. It's mm -hmm. a solid block of aluminum. I mean, it's 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 made well, yeah. pretty good, you know. <laughs> so. Well, yeah, you know, the, the 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 one piece of aluminum, right? That was the first MacBook Air. Remember, they were handing it around at WWC, yeah. showing it off. It's one big chunk that they carved out. So that's that's and, obviously the way to do it. And it, they needed to use aluminum. It, it, well, they needed to use something stiff, right? They could have used carbon fiber, maybe if they could have made that. But uh, they need to keep all the sensors aligned in this. And there's a bunch of 3D sensors and cameras on this that make the digital twin around you, right? Mm -hmm. So it, the theme of the year is digital twins are getting amazing. Uh, and yeah. we should talk about what that is, right? Uh, high resolution, low latency digital twins. I mean, when you're using the camera on here and you're recording, you're actually walking inside the digital twin while capturing the digital twin, which is a real boom. You know, <laughs> I was I was genuinely surprised because everyone was talking about the pass through being a little bit off and a little bit this, that, and and you know, I got to tell you, I put that thing on. I can read my watch. I can read my phone. 
it's it's no problem. And and I, I found maybe because of my expectation was a little bit lower based on what everyone was saying, but the pass through for me is insane. You genuinely yeah. do not realize that you're actually looking at cameras. It's 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 uncanny, really. Yeah, yeah. It looks like the house around you, right, or the office around you, wherever you're wearing it. It mm-hmm. looks like that, right? But it's not that. It's, it's not, not real that. at all. It's not that. You're on a digital twin. You're looking that, at a digital twin, right? What a do you digital think? copy of the real world. Even humans that are walking in, they are a digital twin. They're not real in the headset. <laughs> I found an interesting use case the other day that I didn't realize was there. I was I was FaceTiming with someone just on their iPhone. Yeah. And, of course, after they get over the, that's you, you know, uh, that they have the, the persona that's being worked on. All of a sudden I said, check this out. You, and you can share what you're seeing, right? Yeah. So the next time you know you're talking to someone, you know what do you do when you're FaceTime? You know you hit the little thing and you flip the camera around and you you go like this, right? But yeah. if you want to really share with someone, you want to really connect with, and they're saying, well, what are you doing or where are you or what's happening? You you tap. Yeah. What, what are we going to call this? It's not a tap. It's a pinch. Is that what they're calling it? Pinch gesture. Pinch. Yes. I, by the way, I was trying to do it like this for a while. I don't know why. And I'm like, nope, it doesn't like that. It really wants these two fingers. It, it, it's, well, keep in mind the sensors are on up here and it's seeing your finger down here. And right, so right. You can't make see sure the middle your one. finger is you know, yeah. where it can see it. <laughs> that makes sense. That You'll makes figure sense. it out pretty quick, right? It's like, yeah, okay, well, you also yeah, see it down here, you know? But the idea that I can sit there now and I can have, I can show you, literally yeah. show you what I'm seeing is is yeah. a use case that I feel like sort of slipped under the radar, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. we, well, this... you know, people are figuring out. I mean, we've only had this a week, you know. It takes some time to figure out what this for, <laughs> is for, you know. And then uh, there's a hackathon tomorrow, so those hackers are this weekend are going to build new things, and you know, in three months, the their thing will be finished, right? And and get out on the market. So, right. we, you know, we have a lot of future to go. <laughs> we, I, I just because we got this doesn't mean it's over. No, this is just the beginning. It's, right? it's it is absolutely, and of course, I, I'm I'm like most people as I'm realizing. Oh, I have to do this as a web app now, and oh, I have to do, you know all the streaming services that aren't there yet, and I'm setting all that up, and uh, and I'm thinking, why am I bothering? I know by the time I do this, it'll start hitting the app stores. I mean, it's not as if. Netflix is not going to be there, right? I mean, no, they're, they're clearly going to be there. All of them are going to be yeah, there. Yeah, not necessarily. Big companies go away when there's paradigm shifts, and they're uh, they're really uh, blowing it by not being on this device. But, Tell me why about that. Why do you why do you think any? I mean, especially because the streaming. I mean, streaming is not profitable for the studios as it is. So why do you think they would make that strategic move to not have no another place on to that. be? There's only two hundred thousand users, three hundred thousand users of this thing so far, right? They're rich. They spent thirty five hundred bucks on this, but the bean counters at uh, Netflix say that's that doesn't even move a rounding uh, number. You know, it's a it's too small an audience to care about. That's why they, you know, and and they don't. They yeah, don't how like hard Apple. is it to make? They how, also how hard see is Apple it? as a competitor. Apple mm. has three D things on the, on their Apple TV, right? Right, right. They're coming after Netflix. What? Here's the here's the problem. If you get one of the, let's say it's five years from now, you're wearing a pair of glasses, right? Because right. this is just the first device. This oh, is the for ugly sure. Device that doesn't have much uh, power, right? It's like the first Macintosh. Did anybody really like using that? No, it was a piece of shit, right? But it only had 128 uh, megs of RAM. I mean, you know, yeah, yeah. right? It was like, no, it didn't even have 120. It had 128 k of RAM. K. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, my first right. external hard drive was this a 10 a, megabyte MFM drive. I, I have mean, a half a terabyte on mine, right? I, you could yeah, have bought yeah. a terabyte one. I was like, wow, I should have bought a terabyte one. Just have it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, oh man. Uh, well, so you're so you're so you think that they're just concerned because they're seeing it as as, as competition, but. I mean, Microsoft. No, they're, and they're bean counters. They're running these companies. This is why. Every time there's a paradigm shift, big companies go away. Borland, WordPerfect, uh, Nokia, Rim, right? Kodak, they're all gone. Why? They're, they were dramatic companies. Alta Vista was the biggest search engine in the world, right? And, and uh, they thought they had search all wrapped up, and then Google comes along and right. takes it away from them, right? Right, right. And why does that happen? Because of the bean counters, because they're serving existing customers, because they don't see the future, because they don't think about it, because they don't see uh, this is going to move the needle anytime soon. 
but the brands are going to be built in the next 18 months on this headset with I, a small I, audience because you think it's going to it be a small gonna audience be small and th- well it's only 200,000 sold well, right that's, it's a very that's today small. as we speak yeah i know but in we know that in 5 years everybody's wearing glasses and everybody's moved into the new paradigm which is this thing right mm-hmm. that's why it's important to be on it because because if they take too long to get in there apple's going to take all their lunch but the real argument is friday night it's friday today right what do people do on friday night with their families, with their lovers, with their, right? This is gonna take minutes away from Netflix. Because if you have one of these, you ain't gonna watch Netflix in it. You, right. There's way better things to do this Friday night in this headset. And so that's the real problem for Netflix. Because I'm growing up in this device with really amazing 3D things. Uh, why do I wanna watch a, a 2D screen. I mean, you watch Alicia Keys in here. It's f-ing insane. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And and people who don't go to the Apple store and don't get the demo don't un- have any clue about that. Right. Right. That's right. going to take market away from Netflix. Eventually, if Netflix doesn't get on top of that, they're gone because you're not going to watch Netflix on Friday night in your glasses in the future. Right. right. So, so you this... think you you think that it's going to take a different form factor before this becomes more mainstream? Because I feel oh, yeah. I feel differently. So I feel like people lighter. are. I, I think it needs to get louder, but I think the price is really what's what's holding yeah. most people back, uh, right? I mean, but I'm looking uh, at it as another computer. Come on, man! This cost a million dollars in the in the F thirty five fighter jet. Now it's thirty five hundred <laughs> bucks, and it's way better than the one that's in the F thirty five fighter jet. Okay. That's probably true. That's probably true. So yeah. stop looking at the price. Uh, my TV costs eight thousand dollars. This is way f-ing better than my eight thousand dollar TV. I'm sorry to swear, but I'm passionate yeah. about this. It's it's mind blowing. You got to get to the Apple Store and get a demo of this. It's right, like it's going to change entertainment for everybody. Mm-hmm. Right? You got a movie theater now on your face. You can lie in bed and watch a movie better than my $8,000 TV and it really was a $15,000 system, right? Because I got a Sonos on it too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And have it attached to the wall, right? You know what's, what's, what's crazy is, and you can control it with that, obviously. You saw, you saw that. That's one, yeah. of the, one, of the, one of the connected items. Well, let me ask you something. What do you think are the ramifications of the fact that the early adopters, right? There's the, you know, there's, yeah. the, there's the tech enthusiasts that, of course, we're going to get this no matter what. Right. Yeah. But the best marketing that Apple doesn't need to, it's like Tesla. They don't have to yeah. spend a penny on marketing. It's all word of mouth. You do, you look at the reviews, every single one is positive, minus the yeah. few that just want clicks. Right. And then you'll yeah. see the headline on YouTube yeah. where they I say, mean, it has I'm early taking adopter it back. Pain, right? You'll find it doesn't have very many things to do. You, you run through the things to do pretty quick, mm-hmm. but then you're wi- working on 2D screens. Apple made a real key decision in the development of this. They're gonna make 2D screens look stunning. And the 3D stuff is okay, right? Right. So far. The 3D stuff in the second headset, they already know this. They they have planned obsolescence. They know the next 10 years of devices in this, right? They know right. glasses are coming in three or four years. They know that the second device is coming in 18 months and it has a lighter weight, lower price, um, uh, more GPU, right? It has an M3 processor instead of an M2 processor and a few other things. And around that time, they're going to bring fitness service, right? They're going to bring a lot of new things for that because that's when the mass market starts to show up. It's not mm-hmm. It's not that everybody will have the second device, but you'll you'll start seeing it like in the subways, like a lot, either right. the first or the second device by then. And that gets the market ready for the glasses. The glasses are the iPhone event, right? right. And this third product is glasses. And Apple has huge advantages as it gets into the uh, glasses market because they have a phone in your hand with a lot of GPU and a lot of radios in here. Right, right. A lot of uh, big heat sink, battery, right? Stuff like this. I thought it was also interesting that you can get different magnifying, you're talking about glasses, and I'm thinking, oh, you know what, you can get this with your prescription glasses already. It's almost a little bit of foreshadowing that they're already preparing for the fact that these are going to need to be 
so customizable that and I was the first one it. to say that Zeiss and Apple were working together because I was at the Consumer Electronics Show in the augmented reality space. Zeiss had a big booth right in the middle of that, right? Mm-hmm. And it was empty. What kind of company? Keep in mind, Zeiss is the number one optics company in the world, right? And they, the year before, they were showing me augmented reality wave optics that were pretty good, pretty sharp. We haven't seen those since. Only Apple can force another company to take all their products off of the CES floor after they right. spent a million dollars doing that, right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> hey, I remember the first iPhone when it launched. I was at CES, and there were booths that had little signs, no iPhone here, because that's yeah. everyone, everyone wanted to see it. <laughs> Yeah. And of course, it wasn't it wasn't there. You know, yeah. you've you've gone through so many different iterations. I mean, you of course you know, the yeah. Google Glass and all the rift spatial and... computing the, before Apple came out with this thing because I saw Apple coming for so long, so long. Take take me through starting back. You know, with I, I hate to say the the Google Glass. I know you're not taking this one in the shower. Right. Right. We know this one's not going in the shower. It's not though. waterproof, so yeah. and I don't have an extra four grand to blow just to get some hits, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But that, you know what? That people forever. do. You know, you can put that in a blender. You know, I haven't seen somebody try to blend this thing yet. You know? That's you right. Remember that's the guy right. who did Will it blend and mm-hmm, he mm-hmm. makes uh, blenders? He would put iPhones in his blender and blend them up. You know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but take take me through the last three or four iterations. You know, you have the HTC Vive. You've got you yeah. know, the Quests and the Quest yeah, Pros and all that. What makes, what do you think, other than the fanboy factor, because we have to eliminate that, because there were, the thing could suck and it still would sell, you know, half a million units, right? What do you think is making this so much more unique? You know, they're trying to not call it AR, VR, they're trying not to call it a VR headset because it's. Well, they're heading toward 2028, somewhere around 2028. Let's even call it 2030 because it'll probably. uh, everything slips you know (laughs) this thing slipped three years by the way this was supposed to be out three years ago and it slipped three years three separate years right because it just wasn't finished it wasn't working right the the developer tools weren't good enough it didn't hit apple's quality bars right and now it's out same thing in 2028 2028, they're uh, working on autonomous car. Why are they working on that? Because transportation is about to turn into transportation as a service. You're going to order your transportation on a computer, right, or a phone or glasses or one of these things. Like an Uber, but Uber has a human in it. Costs $18 an hour re- uh, wholesale, right, which turns into $60 an hour retail, right? right. You triple the price. Um, the autonomous car when it comes is going to be a lot cheaper and a lot better quality and a lot more consistent and a lot higher brand so as soon as apple figures out how to get you know a million cars on the road which is a big problem for them with uh, autonomous car in it you're going to see apple's transportation as a service arrive you're not going to own an apple car you're going to get it to pick you up and take you to the airport right or take you to the school to pick your kids up, or right? It, it'll just be something like that. Around that time, they're also working on humanoid robots, and they're working on glasses. They're all going to arrive at the same time. That's why, and all three of those are spatial computers. Spatial computing is computing that a human, a robot, a virtual being can move through, can walk through. Well, now we see how it works, right? Right. We have a really good digital twin. It turns the world into grids and grids of millions and millions of volumetric pixels around you. And it can change any of those volumetric pixels to do things, right? Put SpongeBob on your table if you want. Right, right. right. Virtual, but what, what do you SpongeBob think makes, content. what do you think is making this so much more of a thing than, you know, when we know Oculus started with the Kickstarter, because right? Apple, you know, wait, Apple always comes last. Steve Jobs told his employees, shoot the pioneers in the head, in the back, take their position, because it's a lot easier to take their position. They make a lot of mistakes. Always when you go first, you make mistakes. You you don't know how people are going to use VR, right? Zuckerberg has a guardian system. It doesn't work very well. It hurts people. Right. My dad got hurt in the guardian system. And, you know, Apple studies this and goes, oh, that's, that's sort of cool idea but not really well executed we're gonna get rid of it they get rid of there is no guardian in this thing you don't have Mm -hmm. to draw a a border around where you're sitting like you do in the zuckerberg device right right right. and uh or standing 
it, it just lets you walk around your house the first time you put it on, right? You're the first time you put it on, you see your house, you walk around your house. Not a problem. Right, right. You're not seeing the real house. You're seeing the digital twin. But <laughs> you're walking around a digital twin of your house, which you don't realize. It looks like the real house. Right. But what it did was just cut up your house into millions and millions of voxels, little tiny, tiny volumetric cubes all around you. And it's pretty stunning. And now that we have that kind of digital twin, it really changes things. Apple always comes in late. They have a better digital twin than Zuckerberg's. It, it, the reality looks like reality in this thing. It doesn't look like reality in the in the vision in the Quest Three. Right, right. right. It looks watery. It looks shitty. It it doesn't have. It's not. I can't shoot video. Right. Oh yeah. I can it's, shoot it's, video of the digital twin in this as I walk around inside the digital twin as it's making the digital twin. It's like whoa, that's a mind blow. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, right. it's, a, it's a lot of layers. It's a and lot of layers. Apple waits until the screens are good enough, right? Uh, Zuckerberg put a pair of screens in his quest why because he wants to keep it under five hundred dollars and you know he didn't have the ability to buy the latest most bleeding edge chips like apple does apple bought every single sony 4k 4.5k chip for this thing right mm. <laughs> and the chips are stunning you can watch movies in this thing it's like whoa yeah apple has uh, you know goes oh VR is good for experiences like going to concerts or watching movies, right? Digital, digital experience, going to fights, going to football games, stuff like that, playing games. But they're, they wait until they get the good headphones. They're the number one headphone company in the world. Mm -hmm. Zuckerberg doesn't have headphones. He had to buy cheap headphones. It sounds like shit. So you get into the Quest 3 and you want to go to a concert, it sounds like shit. You put on the Apple headset and it sounds amazing. I'm sorry. I'm not using shit. Well, that's the so you're yeah. saying that the, the, the basically by waiting to see all the pain points yeah. and then working and, and doing fixing all factor, those. They built 10 houses inside their headquarters so that they could walk people through the house, a fake house, like a whole house inside their headquarters to do this kind of human factor testing. This is crazy. This is more human factor research than any company has ever done combined. Well, it shows. I mean, I was yeah. sitting working with it and I wanted, there was something I was looking at on the screen that I, sometimes when I'm lazy, I just want to take a picture of it. I'll grab my phone. And I literally yeah. sat there and I wanted to take a picture. I went, oh, duh, there's, there's nothing there. I can't take a picture of this with yeah. my phone. It's nothing there. And then I realized I got to, I'll just do it on the, on the headset itself. But it, yeah. it, it it's that, uh, it's that real feeling that you yeah. honestly, at least I didn't, it, it didn't even think twice about it. I didn't yeah. think twice, but I was doing what I always do. I was reaching up to take a picture of what's in front of me, but there's nothing there. Yeah. It's uh, it's quite a, a thing. For insurance, uh, oh, man. You know, I, I, a friend runs a uh, Go insurance company for car, car insurance. And, mm -hmm. uh, it's it's hard market. to see this device making really big uh, changes to that. But what what it does let him do is build software for this device because he knows the glasses are coming. Mm -hmm. When you have all, a lot of your consumers in glasses like five years from now and a lot of uh, your employees in, in glasses, now you can rethink your company from scratch. You can think rethink how you're going to handle insurance claims, right? Because if I have a pair, I mean, this thing has a crap load of cameras on the front of it, right? like six of them that I can see, right? And probably a couple more 3D sensors. Right. So think about doing insurance claims on a car wreck or something like that. If you have a pair of glasses, you might be able to talk to an AI uh, at an insurance company, like, uh, an, uh, like an agent, like the Gecko, <laughs> right? And walk you through, gecko, three right? steps to You'll the left. You'll be talking to the Geico person. Gecko. Uh, the Geico Gecko will go, we just sensed you were in an auto accident because yeah. you stopped real abruptly. <laughs> and we know uh, the sensor array knows you just hit something, right? Yeah, and, yeah. And, we, we, you know, either that or you can just say, hey, s uh, I just was in an accident. Can you pull up my ge Gecko account? Right, right. right. Geico account or my uh, Go account. And then you could walk around the car and this thing can make a 3D model of the car in real time as you walk around it. That's the digital twin. It can make a digital twin of your car wreck. And right. so the 
insurance agent can then go, okay, that looks like you're going to need a new bumper and I knew this. Well, we know the price of that. They right. progressive knew the price of that. Right. right when right. I got in a wreck. Right. They gave me a, I mean, did the, it, was it completely accurate? No, because, you know, you pull off the bumper and tr start, you start seeing there's other things broken. Oh, you got to increase the uh, estimate a thousand dollars. Right. Right. But, right. The sensors. But, but they know what the average is and they can make a pretty good immediate, uh, you know, hey, it looks like that's going to be uh, $2,000. We already have three different auto th places you can take your car to tell the, you know, pick one of them and tell the tow truck driver to take your car there. And then we'll uh, work on the rest of the, of the transaction later, you know. Claim handling is a given. It seems seems like a, a an easy transition because they're already doing that right now with your phone, right? There's apps that with well, the claims adjusters. Progressive and companies is the best at it. I mean, I, somebody hit me and uh, they were a progressive uh, user, and it was just like, send me a photo, <laughs> send me your, send me yeah. your insurance agent's name, you know, right? And boom, they, they took care of it. And why does that matter? Because I'm talking about it now. Yeah, right, right. I'm telling another human being get progressive if you can, because they they really handled that amazingly. Right. We right? work with progressive as well, so I know what you're talking about. They're they're one of the even on the on the broker end, which is what I see. Their technology is superior than yeah. a lot of carriers we work with. So it's it's right? definitely so part of the culture. Eventually, you know, smart people talk to other smart people, and eventually they're all switching to progressive because progressive has the best customer service, right? I mean, it's not difficult to see how you build a company and, and make sure you stay relevant in the future. You care right. about customer sat numbers? You, you got to start doing this stuff. Right. right. Let me ask you this. What is this when you're trying to insure it? Is it a computer? Is it a stereo? Is it uh, some type of scheduled you know, artwork? What, what, what category does this fall in? Because is it a musical instrument? You know, we've got all these categories as in, in the insurance world. Where does this fall? Um, I would put it under headphones. <laughs> if you're, I have a two thousand dollar pair of Audi's headphones, right? If they got ripped off, if somebody broke in my house and stole those, how would I get paid? You know, how how would I uh, report that a headphone? This is sort of like a headphone, but it's also a TV. You're right, you know, as a human. But you know, right. ins insurance. It's a consumer electronics gadget, right? It costs. $3,500. So I think we're going to have to rider. come up with, with different categories because like yeah. we're seeing, it could be arguably, and, and, and again, I'm, I'm already starting to wonder about that. I start getting a little worked up like, okay, well, we have to let people know if they have this, yeah. that we have to change coverage to, you know, accommodate for it. But I have, but every carrier, you know, they're looking at me like I'm crazy now. They're like, yeah. well, what is it? I mean, they've yeah. heard of it, but they're not sure what it is really. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it opens up a whole can of worms because this is just like it's technology we've never seen. You know, insurance companies have to insure this stuff, but they need to be able to put it in a box. You know what I'm yeah, saying? The, the thing about the, all right, so it's not a TV because the TV is attached to the wall or sitting on a desk or something like that, right? Okay. This is a mobile device, so you can take it outside. Uh, it's more like a headphone. So if I dropped my four, $550 Apple Max headphones and broke them, how would I, uh, re you know, or if I got them stolen out of my car, right? That happens a lot in San Francisco. Somebody mm -hmm. breaks your window, steals uh, $5,000 worth of shit out of your car, right? That gets reported to insurance. How does insurance handle that? Well, it's a mobile device. It's like a headphone, but it's more expensive. It's sort of like a TV, but it's not on the wall. It's a mobile device, right? You know, so, it's, it's kind of like a laptop, but it doesn't go on your lap. Yeah, you know, you know it's, it's like a computer. It's a mobile device, something. So you have to start thinking, okay, we got to insure it against getting stolen out of a car or getting dropped right into, if I drop it into water because I'm an idiot, right? Uh, that happens all the time. Um, or I get put, I fall into water or something like that, wearing it. Well, you're outside it's and it's rain. It starts drizzling. I mean, who knows, right? Because who knows, right? Yeah. So you, you know, you're going to need insurance on this. It's it's thirty five hundred bucks, right? right? Or four thousand. It's you know what with with tax and and the and the case, right? You know, you're and you're easily. 
Yeah, right. you're, you're, you're and soon you're gonna have right? gloves and baseball bats and golf clubs in this thing, tennis rackets, right? All, they're just gonna be all, all. So your car might have like six thousand dollars worth of shit to go, like all together, right? And right. all of a sudden it gets broken into, and they steal all that, and ah, that's. What do you think this is going to do as far as the work from home movement, I guess, that we're seeing? Because I know for me, I noticed now that I can very easily, whenever I would travel, yeah, I bring my laptop and usually my iPad is the second screen. And it's still a little bit not what I'm used to. I'm, new, I'm used to my three 4K screens that I work from. With yeah. this, I'm thinking... You'll get used to it. I, I sat yeah. on the beach the other day working. It's, it's like, whoa, I couldn't work on the beach before because I couldn't see the screen. And Right. You know, yeah, it, it, there's a risk of getting some salt air in this thing. And again, insurance, you know. <laughs> right, right. In a year, does it start getting corroded? And, you know, because I don't think Apple be- Care is out, is even available for this if you but, wanted to. There buy is, it. but I don't know what it covers, you know, and, yeah. and all that. Um, it's, it will empower more working from home if you, if you're one of those lucky people. Um, because you get as many monitors around you wherever you want. So right, if you want right. to work in the backyard on a sunny day, put on the headset, sit on the backyard and work. Right. It's really nice. You can't drag your iMac out there. You, you right. could have a, 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 you know, a, a laptop out, but if you're in a bright sunny day, you can't see the screen. So it's really hard to work in a bright sunny day. In this thing, you can work. No problem. Anywhere. Anywhere. On That's what p- I... That's what I found is I was I was realized that now when I go away, I was practicing in the office, right? I just went and went into the corner basically and I said, Okay, yeah. I'm gonna set up my work environment and I just set everything up and thought, Well, yeah, basically. I mean the only thing that I can't do quickly on it is type. Okay, I'll bring a magic keyboard, right? That will yeah. pair to it like this, you know, for long typing if I don't want to use dictation. But other than that, yeah, I mean, I don't need to yeah. carry my laptop and my iPad. There, you know, what, what do you think as far as a little bit of cannibalism for their own products that this might do to the laptop market? Because I'm usually the first one jumping they on the it. next Apple Silicon, but I don't know. That's why they're charging 3500 bucks. They, they know this is going to be a fairly expensive thing for a, while, for a bit. You know, 10 years from now, it's going to be cheap. But today... But do you see people buying less MacBooks because there's this oh, yeah. now? Like, I don't like use, the iPod I don't use the faded Mac away. Anymore. I, I, even my Mac that I have on my desk that I'm talking to right now, I, I, when I'm working now, I'm working inside the headset. I airplay that Mac to the headset as a big freaking screen. So it actually extended my iMac, right? And made it more useful, more relevant because I get a much better screen than the screen that's built into the iMac. Right, right, right. right. Yeah, so so you you agree that there's going to be because I was thinking about this because I'm not eager to upgrade to the next you know Sil- Apple Silicon laptop you know I've, I've got the one. Uh, we're in a new world from now on, you know, particularly as these things get smaller and smaller over time, right? Three years from now, maybe it's not quite this small in this light, but it's getting in this form factor, right? Uh, maybe a wrap around. Uh, 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 blade right. like Oakley makes, right? You see these uh, Olympic mm-hmm. uh, volleyball players, they have these like in Ready Player players. Ones, that, that sort of a look. Yes. Yeah. In fact, hold on a second. I got, I got a Ready Player Ones poster. Oh, uh, it's one of the greatest. One of the greatest. <laughs> And, you know, I will tell you, I read the book long before they even talked about a movie, and it was mind-blowing then. I loved the heck out of it, and, and the movie was yeah. fun, but there's nothing like the first read-through of that book was just, yeah, you yeah. know? And it's not just Joe Rachel, here, because right? my not, kid loved... Now we understand how that shit works, right? Because once you go to an Apple store, put it on, you understand. You're in a Ready Player One world now, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's... uh. It's quite a world. <laughs> it's, a, it's quite a it, world. And it's it, right it, at the beginning. I mean, there's only 600 apps. You know, the first iPhone had zero apps. So we're ahead of and that. And you remember all the noise, everyone having a fit, and Steve Jobs finally came out and said, relax, it's coming. We, yeah. all, know in, we all know that's going to come now. We don't even oh, have yeah. to worry about it. It's just a matter of when. Yeah. When I went and picked up my unit, there were three developers ahead of me that were that were just yapping about, you know, they're buying, picking up seven, eight units, you know, and they're doing all this yeah. development. And and I was thinking, well, they're just starting now. So when does when is that 
probably six months. You know, they'll probably uh, put a three, version one out. Three to six, you're going to start seeing things coming out of the woodwork. Well, there's a hackathon tomorrow in San Francisco, right? And it's sold out. You can't get in. <laughs> that wow. tells you something, right? You something. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of people interested in building for this all of a sudden. Boom. <laughs> you know, yeah. that's Apple's power. It's like, oh, everybody gets excited because it's Apple. Everybody trusts Apple. Apple has the best ecosystem, right? And this device is stunning. When people go to the Apple store, they're like, oh, I'm in. Right. Well, you said ecosystem. You reminded me. We were talking We were talking was it yesterday before about how I'm, I'm, tr I'm starting to put all my, you know, programs and apps and, and web apps in the thing and I need passwords. And yeah. I just intuitively I'm I'm highlighting the password from my password manager on my phone and yeah. I look up and I you know and I look in the right spot and I do this and then I long I literally a long pinch and then yeah. paste comes up. And it was just again it was one of those yeah. I didn't even think twice about it because I'm used yeah. to doing it from my phone to my Mac. So I just assumed right the same yeah. thing would work with this. So other By the way, I, it's just, uh, for the first few days, I did this a lot, right? Uh, pinching in there. In front you of you. Do, yeah. You don't need to do that. Yeah, yeah. You look at the thing and you can you can keep your hand down on your leg so it doesn't yeah. get tired. And yeah. you pinch it down there yeah. and it selects whatever you're looking at. It's like, whoa, this is a new way of working on things. It's yeah, like, oh, yeah. This is really cool. Yeah, yeah. It, it is. And uh, forgetting ecosystem, let's talk about competition. So I some. think we can uh, we can comfortably there both agree. I refuse I refuse to compare it anymore to Zuckerberg. That's what I was else. just going to say is I, can, we can agree that it's not on the same plane at all as no. of anything. It has two K screens. It has five K screens. Start with that. I, it's over. No. I, sorry, it's over. I can't read text in the Zuckerberg device because he puts a shitty screen in it. And I tried. I so wanted that to be my my Kindle. I wanted to be able to just sit back and relax and read. I thought that'd be so great. Yeah. And no matter how hard I tried, how big I made the text, no, nah, it just no. wasn't going to happen. This, though, you can read in it, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So yeah. now you can work in it. Now you can do email and calendars and all the other we all do. So do you right? see anybody else? You know, Microsoft's pretty aggressive, right? They're putting their apps no, in No, they, they fired their team. They they knew this was coming. They knew they couldn't compete with it. They just said, uncle, we're out. Uh, we'll make the data centers for it. <laughs> right? That's, right. And that's what Apple, what Microsoft's doing. It's doing a whole bunch of enterprise stuff, right? They have $14 billion business at Microsoft. And they'll all eventually show up in this device, right? Microsoft Dynamics to run your supply chain or SQL Server to run your database or, right, or, or Office to run your uh, Office stuff, right? Right. Your email and your... Well, they have all the apps but Outlook so far at launch, which I thought was interesting. You know, Word is there, Excel is there, Teams is there. But so, they're, so you don't think that they're going to... They're even contemplating a competitive headset. Like they left the cell phone industry. You don't think that... Uh, that this they, type of device is even on their radar. This will cause different discussion because people will understand that this range of devices is coming and they're going to change, uh, you know, their strategy. Uh, could they do, uh, I mean, they invented the HoloLens. They know how to build this kind of thing at some mm -hmm. level, but uh, I don't know. If not them, who? I mean, I this, would expect we, to see Microsoft show up again, maybe with the Xbox glasses. I, you know, I, I don't know. I, I mean, if not Microsoft, I think it's over. Who? Personally, I, I think it really is over. And the patents that Apple has, Apple mm. started patenting this in 2007, right? Right. So they've been working on this for more than 12 years. Right. 14 years. Uh, and that's when they wrote the patent. So they were working on it before that. Right. Right. And so somebody had to go and really think through what, it, what is, what is this future going to be and really think it through and, and start patenting ideas and stuff like that. And then someone said they dumped you know, on launch day another like 40 patents, you know, that they had to hold yeah. back because that they, that they dropped. Yeah. They, they, Apple's the best at hiding patents from people. They, yeah. they have shell corporations. They hide patents all over the place. You can't, like I'm, somebody sent me a whole list of patents, and we can't figure out who they belong to. I think you figure it's them. <laughs> I figure it's them because only Apple really does. It. It's like this Carl Zeiss story again. Only right. Apple can force another major company to not go to CES. Yeah, there's no other com. There is no other company that has that power over a CEO at another company to force them to pull their products off of the floor. 
Right. Brand. And not in an underhanded way, by the way. I mean, it's not as if they, no, you know, they pulled mean, a Walmart on them or something. Zeiss it's is just... very happy to have a deal with Apple. Oh, yeah. I, they're going to make the waveguides or whatever device, you know, optics mm-hmm. for the next glasses, right? Mm-hmm. They, they have a lot. That was a smart visit. There's a reason they agreed to pull their products off the shelf floor. Right, right, right. right. Well, so uh, we can't, we can't, uh, we can't envision a future. Bad pun. We can't have spatial computing as the, the the future if it's just Apple, right? I mean, some other company has to. Patents aside, are we going to get into that same thing when with the pinch and zoom? How that became. It's too too. Um, the court ruled that, that Apple couldn't maintain that. Right? It was too generic. Yeah. I forgot the term for it. If, if we've got all these patents and yeah. we know the company is going to do well with it, we can't assume that no one else will. I started asking myself. Let's assume Apple has a monopoly, a true monopoly. Like transcontinental railroad monopoly, where there's right. only one, <laughs> right? <laughs> By the way, that's what started Silicon Valley. It, it, uh, you know, having a monopoly made Leland right. Stanford a hell of a lot of money, yeah. and he bought yeah. a, a good part of Palo Alto, which is now the lar- the most expensive real estate, right, right. in the world, right? right? And so. Um, Monopoly, they teach this to every kid at Stanford, you know, right. <laughs> how, well, how, to, those, how to get a monopoly, you know. It's those grown up students now that are building that entire neighborhood. You you, you know about that. The, the, so, so I started thinking, OK, I'm going to have a pair of Apple glasses on. It's going to be pretty cool. Uh, except we're going to have to pay everybody. 30, it, it, we're going to have to pay Apple thirty percent. Like if you, if I buy a, a virtual gun <laughs> off of you, or a virtual clothing, thirty percent, thirty percent, thirty percent, a virtual scene, a virtual game, a haunted house, whatever you know, whatever we come up with in the future, we're going to ha- we're going to start making a lot of virtual things and selling it to each other. Well, we got to give Apple thirty percent because they take thirty percent, right? And we're going to get tired of that. And so we're going to increasingly be looking for competition for that. That's one way to look at it. But that really doesn't explain what's going to get me to take off the Apple glasses and put on. Because, you know, that's the big empty spot is who it's got. There has to be there has to to be a duopoly. I mean, there has to be at least one other, right? Tesla. Tesla. Mm -hmm. I'm getting a Cybertruck. If Tesla came out with a pair of glasses, their glasses can be way better integrated into the truck and into the world than Apple can. Because in the Tesla glasses, I could tell the vents to turn on or off, mm-hmm. right? Hey, hey, uh, glasses, uh, hey, Tesla, make my, uh, I'm too hot in here. Turn down the heat, right? right. And it can make that happen. You, Apple can't do that. So n- now all of a sudden I'm thinking, oh, if I get in the Cybertruck, like let's say five years from now, and let's say Elon, has you think a it'll take that button. long to get yours? <laughs> I hope it doesn't take that long. No, I'm getting mine <laughs> in the next couple months. It'll take that long for for Elon Musk to make a competitor to Apple, right? right. And so, if you told me, oh, uh, I I could buy a pair of cyber glasses, cyber uh, blades, let's call it, right? Wrap around cyber blades. You wear in the Cybertruck. Oh, that t- that gets me to take off the Apple glasses, mm-hmm. right, and put on the Tesla. Glasses. But it's situational. It's just it's for it's well, for that particular here's a product. question: Do do I like the Tesla glasses better mm-hmm. than the Apple glasses? And do I take off the Tesla glasses and put the gla- Apple glasses back on right, right. to go back in the house? Right. If so I'm you think in the that's going to be the you think that could be the hook to get to that, someone to well, try that's something a potential, else. That's a big potential. Right? So I'm looking for things like that. What will get people to take off the Apple glasses or not buy the Apple glasses and buy the, the meta glasses? Right. What right. can Zuckerberg do that's going to get me, not just me, the yeah. market to not to, to see that Apple's not relevant in XYZ situation, right? Uh, yeah, I, I just I just would love to know who it's going to be. You know, there. You, well, you, you, Meta you, is spending tens of billions of dollars, so there's going to be a range of products that come out. You haven't seen their products, right? Yeah. Nobody has. They're yeah, spending yeah. a lot of money making glasses of the future, and they're making custom silicon because they they don't. Ha- Zuckerberg doesn't have this, right? Mm-hmm. I visited John Carmack when he worked for Mark Zuckerberg, and he told me this. He's like, this is a huge, huge advantage for Apple because they have something that's this big in your hand. Right? Already. <laughs> or in your pocket. Right, right in your right. pocket, right? So this can hold all the radios, all the va- uh, big 
fucking battery, a big heat sink, a bunch of GPUs that can do the visuality you're mm -hmm. looking at, right? And they have ultra wideband radio that can pass data from here to the glasses very fast, right? In a low latency way. Nobody else has that radio network. Uh, maybe uh, Samsung does with Google, but n most Android phones don't have ultra wideband yet, right? right. So it, nobody else has the pieces to really compete with what Apple's going to build in three or four years, all right? And it's like Apple already has it built into this phone. It's like, oh, oh fuck. There you got to right. take over. And so the, light, the Apple glasses are going to be very lightweight. Well, Zuckerberg knows he needs to compete with that. So he's spending a lot of money building custom silicon for the sides of the glasses or the devices of the future that can talk to the cloud and do the AI inferencing up in the cloud. Because that's uh, AI is going to soon be generating everything in the digital twin, right? Right, right. That you're seeing, right? So that's why these multimodal models that are coming out of the woodwork, there's 26 multimodal models, and most people watching the show haven't even tried one of them yet. Right. Right. You so think, I, but you know what? It's so funny. The models coming for this device. <laughs> I, I was talking about that. People don't realize that they've been using it already. If they've ever used Grammarly, you know, they're using some form of that already, right? I mean, right. go back to Clippy, yeah. right? I mean, it, right. that was just a really basic. That, it, that was no, but we're, this year we're going to see orchestras of AIs that are working, like Siri is being rebuilt from scratch. Please. And we haven't we haven't seen that Siri yet. That's coming in June at WWDC this year. Okay. The Siri of the future is multi-model models, multiple models, a small, a medium, a large, and maybe even a, a cloud uh, tie over to OpenAI, right? And get mm -hmm. a longer. Why do you need three models? Small is fast, low right. latency. So On device. Your AI can talk to you real quick and give you an answer. Right. Medium is for things like, uh, can you find me a, a, an in and out near near me? Right. Stuff like that. Right. Simple things, simple requests, and it, most most requests are that way. Right. Uh, most things people talk to Siri about are, you know, hey, put a timer here, or hey, uh, what's sadly that's like? about all it seems to work well with. Yeah, that or and play finding some songs. music, or right. take me back to my car. Right. S simple requests like that, real fast. Large model gives you more accurate answer for a college history essay or, mm -hmm. you know, something where you need a lot more detail on the thing you're asking, right? Mm -hmm. Then the large model would kick in and that has a little bit longer latency and stuff like that. But it's three models working together. It's an orchestra of mo models. And that's... I only know of three. Apple's already leaked the three. They, 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 the Apple employee put them out in public. So I know there's mm -hmm. at least three, right? And there's if there's three in public, Apple has more in, in the labs, right? Right, right. And these also multimodal, multimodal, modal, model, and modal. Multimodal, multimodal. <laughs> multimodal means it looks at the sensors and the cameras and the microphones, and you can talk to it and show it things with the camera. Right? and it right. can understand you. If you haven't used ChatGPT before, uh, uh, the vision features in ChatGPT are insane. I took a picture of a church. It told me about the church. I took a picture of a flack in front of the church that was in a non-English language and said, hey, can you please translate this? It did. And it told me all sorts of things about the people that flack was talking about. Right? It's so I, was, I was visiting my son. He's in his last year at Wesleyan in Connecticut, and I was trying to show him how that worked. So I'm yeah. sitting in his, in his house right, with, his, with his, his housemates, and I said, just watch. No one move. And I just took a picture. And I yeah. said, tell me what you see. It described... Four kids, they look around college age. This one doesn't shave. Behind them are some banners from sports teams. I mean, it gave more stuff. It was, and they were just dying, right? They couldn't believe it. And I said, it's just picked this out of my, my wife was making some Iranian soup, right? I, I took a picture Ashamas? of the soup. Ashamas? Yeah, yes. It told me that. And it told me the right name. And it told me how to say it in Persian. And told me what's in the soup. And told me how to make it. And told me, right, all sorts of, just from a single photo. So you start thinking, oh, in the future, we're going to be wearing a pair of glasses. It knows where I'm looking, right? That's mm -hmm. Zuckerberg doesn't have an eye sensor, so he can't do that yet, mm -hmm. right? So it knows, oh, I'm looking at this uh, Coke can or I'm looking at uh, the Oreos on, on the shelf or something like that. 
And now I can talk to it about that. Hey, how, how much fat is in that Oreos? How, how many times a week do I need to go running if I buy these Oreos? Right? You know, to work right. off the saturated fat. <laughs> That's right. That, how, what's the best way for me to get this out of my system now that I've just stuffed Don't buy them. them. You know, it'll, right. it'll tell you, you got to run, uh, you know, four miles. If you're going to buy those cookies, if your rings would that be a, change, Would that be right? great if you could ask it that? Say, if I eat this, yeah. how many miles? Miles do I have to walk to burn it off? And it, you know, you, you, yeah, you. it knows. It can tell you. It can make you a plan, right? And it's like, whoa. So <laughs> Anyways, we're new keep... series coming with a lot of new things coming this year, and certainly in this headset, the, the new series is going to be sick. And ChatGPT doesn't have sensors. They right. They can see the church, but they don't really know where the where the phone is right you right. know where the church sort of you could start figuring it out but they don't have the sensors they don't talk to the gps they don't talk to the accelerometers in the phone they don't know where your eyes are looking they don't know where your hands are looking uh, touching and the apple the siri uh, uh, you know in june you're gonna see oh siri knows what you're touching what you're holding what you're eating what you're looking at right what, what you're interacting with and then it's looking at, at the digital twin, which is a copy of the real world, and it's doing computer vision everywhere you look. So if you look at a, a plant, you can say, hey, Siri, what's, what kind of plant is that? And I'll tell you. Right. But there's apps that do that today. It's just you got to download it's, that app. You got to do the app. You got to take the picture. You got to wait. You got to look at it. You know, you keep talking about ChatGPT and Siri. And, I'm, and I can't help but think, wait a minute. ChatGPT is basically half owned by Microsoft. So is that is that the pathway that Microsoft might become more of a service versus a product when it comes to what's running on some of this stuff? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of paths for ChatGPT for an open AI company to bring more and more AI to people. You mm -hmm. know? Um, Brilliant! It's a I, it's an amazing team that's there for sure. I think we we, yeah. we saw the cohesiveness right with that short little ousting, but the you know just some really amazing minds there for sure. Absolutely, they're they're the one to watch. I mean, I. Uh, Sam Altman's out trying to raise seven trillion dollars to make a chip company. That tells you something, right? Right, right. So. Well, you know, it's that's that is. There's no question that the the challenge now. It's like we've come full circle, right? First, we wanted everything. Everything was in the cloud. Then it was all on our computer. These, these powerful. Computers. Nah, we don't need that. We can just have everything in the cloud again. And now we're trying to work backwards to get everything on the chip because we need this computing power to be able to hold all that data and be able to parse through it so quickly. Yeah. We'll get yeah. there. We'll it's get there. It's a crazy world. <laughs> all right. Last thing, and then, and then I'll, and I'll let you go. Yeah. Tell me what, what you expect. How long do you expect this beautiful little case that was more money than probably uh, a lot of Android phones I had just for this case yeah. for the Vision Pro? How I didn't long? buy one. I'm just I'm just gonna beat the freaking thing up, you know, because <laughs> it's it's good. It's gonna be obsolete in 18 months, right? Well, so well, that's where I was going. What do you think's yeah. the the shelf life of this thing? I'm looking at all my old uh, quests now sitting around, and I'm thinking, uh, I mean, I'll never I mean, put that on ever again. You know, it would look horrible. The second device has a lot more GPS. It uh, a GPU, which means it can do a new kind of 3D. This I call it Metaverse 2.0. It's photorealistic Metaverse, te technically done with Gaussian splats or neural radiance fields around you, which are 3D scenes that are changing all the voxels around you, right? <laughs> it's a new technology. Um, that'll a be year and a half? Compelling. I'm going to have to buy that too, right? So I'm going to buy that. This thing is going to go to the kid then, right, as a hand-me-down. Um, and the kid will use it for uh, quite a while, right, because the kid doesn't need bleeding edge. Well, he'll want it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Dad, can I borrow yours to play some new video game you know well i that's the biggest problem is everyone wants to try this out and i know it has guest mode and all that but i i'm yeah. just yeah I, i'm it's 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 kind of a it feels more personal than yeah. handing them your phone somehow you know yeah. what i'm saying it's really a pain in the to share that's true and also the, the you had to take a 3d scan of your face to buy this and it made right. it made the device uh, it it put the spacers in there that fit your face so it fits right. your face it doesn't fit anybody else's face so if you're sharing around they're not going to have as good an experience as if they go to the apple store and then try it out there right 
No, you're, that's absolutely true. Absolutely yeah. true. So you think I, you think we got eighteen months? We can feel like we were uh, uh, of growth in this device. Next Christmas, I, I hear it's coming next September. So okay. right, uh, around eighteen months from now, and it, it might slip into twenty twenty six. Right, uh, we're talking about September twenty twenty five. Right, so the the head the second headset could be you know January twenty twenty six or February like, like this one was right. Um, that's that's fair. That's fair. That's fair. That's still around eighteen months, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you yeah. go it? Go, and, and even after that, this first device is still going to be useful. It's still a pretty cool device. It's just the second device is going to have a lot more GPU and uh, is going to be lighter weight and probably a little cheaper with a touch less resolution. The, the chips that they're gonna use for the second device aren't quite the bleeding edge Sony chips that they're using on this first device. In other words, they're cheaper. But they're not they, going to go you, backward in resolution. They're just not going to take the one that's the furthest. Not, not backward, forward. but a little a little backward. It, it, you might notice it's just a little bit, le- like if you're watching a movie, it might be just a little less resolution or something like that than this device. but. I, n- most people won't care about that, you know. Uh, well, I think a lot of it's going to have to do like with what... $1,900. I mean, I assume the right. price will be like $2,000 instead of $3,500. That's a big difference, you know. Well, you know, there's we don't have one version of the iPhone. Uh, you know, there's, there's yeah. no reason for us to think that there's not going to be more than one version of this, right? The entry yeah. level and then the pro. Five years from now, there's a whole family from lightweight device to heavier device, heavier devices for movies and, you know, really, really amazing virtuality, he- lighter devices for every day, walking around, watching CNN, you know, uh, talking to Siri, that kind of thing, right? So it, and you might not be able to use the uh, glasses the way you use the headset that's plugged in. At because I just sit on the couch plugged in, right? I know. And I, so, everyone complains about the external battery. First of all, you you, you keep it plugged in, or you plug it into another battery pack. You know that yeah. goes forever. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, yeah, true. You can get you can chain your batteries. <laughs> That's what I do. You know, I've got a million of those little bricks. Chain. You got to, got to bring a big heavy battery. Sit on the beach all day long, and while you're working, you know, on the big beach. deal. You know, big deal. Yeah. It's, it's still lighter than your laptop. You know, for sure. You know what? When my battery died, what did I do? Did you go to your laptop? No. What did I do? I went back to my Tesla, which was in the parking lot ah. at the beach. And I kept working there, plugged into the Tesla. The Tesla has a big battery. It'll That's last true. for years. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine? New use case for electric cars is to keep your, you know, their Vision Pro going. <laughs> They go together. Sure. It's like peanut butter and jelly, you know, plug in, you know, you can sit in the electric car all day at long on a hot summer day. It doesn't matter, right? I did. I've done that many, many times. And have you I, had a chance know, to fly with it yet? Because I'm really eager for that. No, not yet. But uh, people have, there's a mode inside. So right, in right. That's what I'm talking center, about. There's a little, uh, a little dot. If you look up, there's a little uh, arrow. And yeah, yeah. You click on that and that pulls up the control center and then you can put it into travel mode. Because as the plane is, let's say a plane is turning, right, all the sensors are going, wah! Right, right. <laughs> so you got to turn off that kind of thing so that your movie stays where you think it's supposed to stay. Right, right. right. Well, I was wondering, and I didn't realize what it did because I haven't flown with it, but yeah. I was thinking, I wonder if it'll help in the car for passengers, of course, because yeah, yeah. I can't read in the car. You get nauseous. I don't know how some people, they, they can but if I could sit in the passenger Even seat on a free, with this like on? if you're going down to Vegas and you're on a on Highway Five, which is a straight road for hours, or going across Kansas, that's eight hours a straight road, right? Yeah, like yeah. there is no turns for eight hours, <laughs> and no chaos and no stopping and going. It's just like you're going 85 miles an hour, 95 miles an hour, and for eight hours, right? If you're a passenger in a car, you're not going to get sick looking at a phone on that, are you? You a get sick when, you, when your wife is driving like a banshee on a curvy road, you know, <laughs> right? Because right? right. I know what makes my kids sick and my family sick. It's always the curvy road. It's not the straight road. On the straight road, right. they can look at their iPads all day long, no problem. And right. same thing if they're in a glasses or a headset, no problem on the curvy road. Um, I'm sorry, on the straight road. On the straight but on the curvy yeah. road, it, it, it might give you some problems, yeah. Because so, well, you're... You're inside a digital twin, which is not the real world. 
it's attached to the real world. And so now your eyes and ears can get out of sync a little bit and you can get nausea. By the way, if you ever get nausea uh, in this thing, get a glass of water, fill it up to the top and stare at the, at the surface of the water for a minute. It reboots your mind and mm. reattaches your eyes and ears to each other so that you stop, stop feeling so sick. You know what? I don't want to curse myself. I was expecting to get nauseous because I'm a little sensitive toward that type of yeah. visual, just the slightest, you know, chip. You will when you start using the video camera on it and mm. then start playing it back. When you, when you like, I, I took a walk with this thing on. The, yeah, you the, were by the train station, I think. Yeah, and I was walking around. I was recording video the whole way, right, as on my walk. And then I watched it back, and it, it made me feel a little nauseous because... Again, your mind, your ears and eyes are out of sync. Your mind is like going, this is not natural. You ate some mushrooms or something, <laughs> right? That's what, it looks that's like what we're moving, but we're not moving. Right? We evolved uh, uh, to throw up if we eat a poisonous mushroom to try to save, our body tries to save our life because we ate something bad, right? right? And that's what causes the nausea. Well, it's the, sep it's the difference between what your eyes and ears are doing. It tells your brain, oh, you ate something poisonous and that's why you feel sick so robert always always fun and and yeah. so and such an exciting time to, it such is an exciting indeed. time by the way there you're on to something you fewer people feel sick in this device than on zuckerberg's device because oh i can of, attest to that for sure because of the latency it's so fast at rebuilding this digital twin around you which means your eyes and ears are synced up while you're in the device and mm -hmm. and also you see the real world around you. you 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 see what you think is the real world around you right and that helps you also um uh sync up your eyes and ears and also there's a a a new kind of radio in your phone, uh, ultra wideband, mm -hmm. and that's spitting a 3D location into the air, right, of the antenna. So coming off this phone is a, a radio wave that tells everybody around it where this thing is in a 3D space, X, Y, Z. And the headset uses that to steady the vol of voxels or the, the, the grids of voxels around you to make sure that they're locked onto the real world in a way that Zuckerberg can't do. And so, really? so there is, so that was, you know, that's an interesting point because I had never thought or knew anything about that. So you're saying yeah. that there is actually an advantage to having an, an iPhone or I assume. It, yes. That with, if you've got or any device, device. I, I have 15 of these devices with this ultra wideband radio in it around me. Right. Uh, my headphone case is fitting this. My air tags is fitting this. Right. Mm -hmm. I have a bunch of air tags. Get more air tags in your life around you. You get steadier. Uh, it'll be even steadier, right? Wow. And that's, anyways, that if you're in a magic leap or a HoloLens and you're dancing in a rave party, right, and your head's moving back and forth, the virtuality is moving on the table, right? Because I, I got, I did this at the uh, uh, Augmented World Expo with Magic Leap. I was moving my head back and forth, and the and the the thing on the table was moving. Mm -hmm. It doesn't move in Apple. So it, yeah. that's why you feel less sick in the Apple device. Magic Leap has some amazing stuff. That You know what? I hadn't th even thought right. about them as being a potential competitor somewhere. They're awfully quiet, but they've got some really good brains over there. and They, they have 6,000 patents. That's all they have. You think? Yeah. And, and so they're worth something to sell it. They just got another a bunch of money. I just don't understand why anybody would invest more in this company. Uh it's over. It's over. Uh, Is it the empty CES booth? Is that the image? No, <laughs> it's it's just they're up against Apple and they're not going to win. They don't have what they what it takes to compete with Apple. So, so yeah. Tesla maybe. You know what? Tesla I think Tesla does. Tesla does have Tesla has a digital twin of the real world cuz they have the car driving around making a digital twin of the world. Right, right. So now all of a sudden, that's why I'm I'm saying I if I'm a Cybertruck owner, and I, and Elon Musk announces, oh, we're coming out with a two thousand dollar pair of glasses for the Cybertruck. I'm you're not thinking it. twice. I'm not thinking twice. First yeah. of all, so that's right. number one. I'm buying it. Number two, if I have the Apple glasses already, 
I'm going to take them off in the Cybertruck and put on the Cybertruck glasses. Minimum. Because mm-hmm. it's going to be way better integrated into the truck. It knows every surface of the truck. It can augment the windows. It can augment the steering wheel. It can put around you. My, like my it, insurance brain is blowing the- up to think about about, about this. They've, they're already well, having such a problem with the autopilot concept to think now that we're going to actually augment the driver's vision yeah. and the liability exposure. That you know there. this is coming. If you fly F-35 fighter jets, right, at 1,000 miles an hour, you're wearing augmented reality glasses that aren't as good as the Apple ones. Right. They cost a million dollars and they're not as good. So you're good. And one of the pilots told me the, the advantage of that is he can see you and you can't see him because you don't have augmented reality glasses. He's flying a stealth plane at night over your head. You're literally, he's over your head and you can't see him. Right. And he yeah. can see you yeah. through the bottom of his plane in his <laughs> augmented reality glasses. So that's what I want in the car. I want to wear a pair of glasses and I see through the car to everything on the road because it has a digital twin of the road. It already has. It already does. Like, right. Right. It's on the screen. You can see it on the Tesla screen. Right. So mm-hmm. can we recreate that in the glasses and make it so that it's safe? But it's uh, first of all, the car's driving in a couple of years. So you still think so? I'm starting to worry. No, it, it, you go go get a ride in version 12, or it'll be in your car soon. Version yeah. 12 is insane. So you can start seeing. Okay, is version 12 perfect? No, it still tries to kill you <laughs> half as often as, as version 11, right? <laughs> Three times less, something like that, right? It's it's learning. It's getting better over time. So then you started asking yourself, well, how many more updates do we need before it gets freaking perfect? Right. right? This is where everybody trusts it. Right. right. It's going to, I've been, I've always been concerned about the idea of autonomous driving just because, again, I get back to the, what do they call it? The train, uh, the, the train dilemma, you know, when you're, the train's going down, you, you know, who do you, who, who do you kill, right? And, and if you, you're face- how do you make a decision like that as a human being in a split second? You have like a half a second to make a decision. You know, you you're gonna get in Iraq. Yeah. Ford's head of safety told me. Uh, head, Ford's head of safety told me that in Iraq's humans haven't applied full braking pressure. So we suck at crisis situation all the time too. We kill forty thousand people in cars. AI is gonna do a lot better than that. Yeah. Oh no, I'm I'm a complete believer that believe me, being in this business as long as I have, drivers yeah. suck. And we are yeah. terrible at this. And, Particularly and, if they're drunk or tired, right, or distracted in some way, looking at their phone, they're getting in accidents, right? You know the severity and frequency of accidents post pandemic is almost triple. Three times as bad yeah. as it was before. It's like yeah. we forgot how to drive, or now we just no, don't care. I don't know what it is. Fo- no, our phone has become more and more and more and more important in our lives, and therefore you're going to look at your phone instead of driving. And I see it on the freeway all the time. You know, because I have an autonomous car, I look at other people now. What are right. they doing? Oh, they're. Oh, look at this guy. He's on his phone while on the freeway. That's really brilliant. You know, yeah, that's going to yeah. lead to a, a positive day for him someday. Yeah. Right, right. You know, what's so funny about that, too, with the, even the way the self-driving works now, I, I'm, you're so spoiled by it that I'm used to, if, if I'm going to stop to, you know, pick up my bottle of water, is I'll just, you know, boom, boom, you know, on the bar so it takes over and I'll reach over and I'll grab it because I need two hands to unscrew the cap of water and I'll have the water and I'll put it back and then just take over. And I was traveling, I was actually in Sacramento and I had a rental car and I was literally, I was blown. I'm like, how do I get my bottle of water? I mean, I, I, I can't look, I, got, I can't look away. I need two hands. I mean, am I using yeah. my knees? I mean, I don't even remember how to do it anymore. You know, yeah. it's, you're so used to having that, 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 that you have, mu- there's muscle memory to being able to hand control off to the car. It's in certain circumstances it, yeah. that you just, you miss when it's not there. Yeah. So. <sighs> All right, Robert, listen. Anyways, new worlds are coming. I mean, in the next three, four, five years, I mean, even in the next 18 months, you're going to see incredible changes for human beings. I mean, the waves of AI that are coming are like, well, people aren't, most people don't, don't, you know, even if they, even if they have chat GPT, have they used the camera feature in that? Most, uh, most people I talk to, even in Silicon Valley, haven't. 
They don't know what it does, right? And yeah. so you start thinking, oh, shit, that's going to be in our classes soon, and it's going to be on all the time. It's going to know what it, we're lo-. It knows everything, everything. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. It's like, wow, that's... So not everyone's like you and I, where I have... I have chat GPT in one window. I have perplexity in another window. I've got bar yeah. in another window. <laughs> and then I'll bounce between them to see who's going to give me the best answer. It's, uh, yeah. it, you're, you're right, though. I think once it, hits, once it hits personal assistance on the phone, I think that's really where, where you're going to start to see people getting more used to it like they became used to, you know, let's face it, everything. I remember when smartphones, you know, I had I'm BlackBerry, right? I mean, the, yeah. my trio, my Palm Trio, remember that? I mean, that was... The first touchscreen, really. Yeah. You know, I, I missed that trio. Even though the battery was like that thick behind it. It was just this monster yeah. thing, but it was awesome. Yeah. That was the, the phone the iPhone team carried. Was that it really? Was phone, that was the phone they were trying to kill. Success. They certainly did. I remember yeah. that on the, on, the, on the demo day. They were showing what was happening in the, with the processor and all the processes running. And yeah. Job says, we can do better than having this go on in the background. You know, the, yeah. the, the concept of sandboxing everything. All right, listen, give yourself a shout out. Where can people find you if they want to they keep track of you? I know you're everywhere. On X? X, formerly known as Twitter. <laughs> all right. That, I mean, that's where I spend all my time I, because it's the only place you can watch the entire. I've mapped out the entire AI industry. I'm the only human being to do that. So if you c- come to X, click on my profile, look at my lists. They're freaking insane. And figure out how to use this new thing called the X Pro, which used to be called TweetDeck. TweetDeck, yeah. I, I can watch the entire world going by in, in, on my screens. And now you can put that in your Vision Pro and watch, go to the beach and watch your the world go by i did just follow that ai list that you built the other day and i what was surprised me about it was the volume of messages that were going out it was yeah. someone is saying something all the time i mean it really oh, yeah. is just going and going go and watch going the ai going. artists man they're insane 24 hours a day there's new tweets every second or two it's like whoa these people are productive <laughs> amazing or they just have way too much time <laughs> one or the other you know uh, productive. <laughs> <laughs> We're going productive. Okay. It's fun to do AR art, you know, and people like yeah. sharing it. It's like, look at my new. I actually just this happened just last night. We were talking. We were in a group chat with like nine, ten people in the family that, about someone, and he has he's bald and he has a big white beard, and everyone's talking. We're kind of making fun of him. So I just re- popped over to, to Chat GPT and I said, "All right, draw me a picture of," and I gave all the details. And then took it, put it in the group chat, and literally two people they message back and they say, and he goes right to the to AI. And I'm like, well, you know, it, it worked. You know, it yeah. gave me exactly what we asked for. It's a new world. It is uh, it insurance, is. man. We haven't even talked about really self driving cars because self driving cars are going to radically change the insurance business because they're not going to get it into wreck. Wrecks. My well, Tesla. Well, the someday, problem they have never right going to wreck itself. Well, somebody might pro- hit it. Right, so I still need insurance because an uninsured motorist gets drunk, hits my car, right, wrecks it. I need insurance for that. Right, but it's not my fault. But here's the so question: somebody else's insurance company is supposed to pay for that if they're insured. Right? This is what we're seeing now, and and it's already been decided, at least for now, is if my if I'm driving my car and it's on autopilot and it causes an accident, I can't go to I can't go to Elon Musk like and say, well, it's your fault, like they're doing with people that post things on Twitter. I'm sorry, on X, you know, they're saying, if you get in trouble, I'll I'll defend you, all that stuff. They're not doing that with the vehicles having accidents. So the insurance carriers are like, hey, it's you. You want to use that tool, right, of of autopilot, that's fine. But at the end of the day, the liability is resting with you. At some point, I think we will see a flip where... What was the movie? Was it? I think it was I Robot with Will Smith. Yeah. When he they're driving and and he says I'm gonna drive and she says you're gonna drive manually. You're gonna take control manually. And it was like I thought, yeah, that day will come where you're going to actually be penalized if you're going to be doing something that can be done better by you know whether it's autopilot or whatever driving assistant that you know might be out there at the time. I mean, analog brakes, airbag, I mean, all these things. Didn't used to exist. Third brake light. Hello. Yeah. You know, when we realize that these things help, we implement them. At some point, when the when the autopilot gets to a place where it can be measured and the actuaries can see that it's actually safer, right, than having a person do it, we will see that impact the insurance market for sure. Yeah. 
the costs will keep going down for people who, who use an autonomous car. So every year you're going to see is you know, 10 years from that, people will have a chart of how the costs were, are coming down, right? Mm -hmm. Because people are using autonomous cars and not getting into a accidents. In a te what this means is Tesla's insurance will be able to underprice the industry mm -hmm. very quickly. And that's going to be a real problem for the auto for the insurance industry because they're going to have to compete with Tesla's insurance costs on a Toyota, and they can't reduce the cost because Toyota doesn't have autonomous car. Tesla so does. So you think they're going to be able to utilize? They're going to off. They're going to undercharge for the Toyota because they're making so you know, they're making so much money insuring the Tesla. It's not making money. The Tesla will never get in an accident that it's it is its fault. Therefore, the cost of uh, of the cost to Elon Musk of insuring your car is going to go down every year. Every year, it's going to go down for decades. It's going to keep going down because the AI is going to keep getting better and better and better and better and do stupider and less and less stupid things over time. As you say, right? it'll try to kill you less, which is which was I, I'm all for that. <laughs> yeah, you know, who wants to be killed by an AI? I don't, you know, I don't want to go out that way. You know, I, I, there's lots of unique ways to go out. That's not the way I want to go. go. Yeah. <laughs> Although I think people that know me would, and you probably too, would say, yeah, I can see that happening. If, if, totally. If, if it would, that would, that, that's totally on him. Totally. <laughs> I'm on my phone taking a picture of the guy on his phone. <laughs> I, seriously, I did it. I did. I should pull it up and show you. <laughs> I take pictures of people on the freeway, you know, because my car is driving just fine. I'll take some pictures of people who are on, on their phone in a, in a driver car. I've, I've anyway. taken pictures of people sleeping. While they're driving, literally like eyes closed, and it's and yeah. I've honked, and and then they they kind of do this, you know. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, I mean, there's there's, I mean, you, if you think if you're talking about you know combining technology, you realize how good the eye tracking is in the yeah. Vision Pro. Imagine, yeah. and I know Tesla has something they were tinkering with where they, if you start to thing. look sleepy, right, that they, it will they, somehow alert you in some way. Think about how revolutionary that really is. If it literally keeps poking you, you know, if you're if you're starting to act that way, or even what does your Tesla do if you if it, if autopilot gets mad at you for not paying attention enough times, shuts it off, right? It penalizes you. You it get puts five you in tries. The penalty box. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If you get so, five of those, you don't you can't use FSD anymore. You yeah. gotta go back to the old system, which is a piece. Of Right? Yeah, so, you know. So then, well, so then imagine though, but it has to be the where you, we get to the point where it's because it's safer to have that yeah. system running, right? Yeah. And if it has to keep poking you, if you're driving, forget all uh, In two years, it's not poking you anymore. It's fully self-driving. Seriously, in two years, wow. this is going to be good enough for both of us to trust it a hundred percent of the time driving and not worry about getting killed. Therefore, we're going to do it a hundred percent of the time. I do it 100% of the time on the freeway. I know, or, but, it, know, it, but it's on the long of, rides. But the, it, in it the behaves city. like a robot. In the you have to, it tries to kill you in the city. <laughs> it totally right? does. You know? And then it wants to take down everyone else it can too. <laughs> it just, it yeah, you know, it, 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 it tried to go across the double yellow uh, at an intersection and try to take me into oncoming traffic. Uh, you know, it tries to kill you once in a while. So you got to watch it. I uh, never uh, understand now, that either because it's two years it from now. It's not going to do that. You know, two years from now, it's going to be trained not to do that. They're fixing all the problems and they're going away at a pretty constant rate. So two years is all it takes. And I hope two so. years we two years we're not we're not driving at all. I'm that not be, driving ever, ever again. As soon as this gets done enough to to, I'm not driving. I'm sleeping. <laughs> Seriously, or listening to music and or an audio book and zoning out. Playing video games with my friends on the Vision Pro, right? Well, then my car's driving me around or whatever. Right, right, right. right. Well, I, I, I think it's pretty optimistic for 24 months, but uh, I'm thrilled if it's true because I, I feel like that's all. All you have to solved. do is look at how fast it has it been learning in the past 24 months. The slope is pretty clear. I hope you're right. I hope you're I'm, right. I I, I'm not just right. I, all you have to do is understand AI and how it improves and watch it and count the, the error rates. The error rates are what matters and they're going away. 
they're going away at a pretty good clip. So it, it, the slope of error rates tells you in two years it's going to be freaking perfect, ish, right? Right. So okay, maybe you're right. Two more years is like perfect, perfect. Right. Like right. it never tries to kill anybody. <laughs> right? I just like how that's how you you don't say it as it does an error or does something improperly. No, I or try takes to kill it you. it no, just I, wants I, to kill I, you. You know. <laughs> Usually it doesn't actually, because it drives my family next to a wall at 80 miles an hour on a curvy road, and it does pretty good at that. Uh, it's it's you know in the city it tr- it still gets a little confused here and there once in a while. Yeah, so. yeah, I I'm I'm right there with you. I'm right there with you. Well, th- Omar who has version 12 says a lot fewer errors, and that's coming any day now. Really, I didn't even know that it was in the wild yet. Yeah, yeah. Uh, early pool has it. I call that the early pool. Omar, who runs whole Mars catalog and a few others get are in the early pool and they got it. And it's next level. He, he's been putting up videos of it. It's like, wow. I can't wait. You know what? It's so it's so sad when you realize, again, doing what I do for a living, how much how many people get hurt driving. And yeah. if I can just, you know, See it based on the claim flow 40, that's coming. Forty thousand dead in. in America alone. Dead, and that. How, how much carnage has happened? How many yeah. people are in the hospital for a month? You know. Cause. Yeah, yeah. I would love nothing more than to see this come to fruition, and that'll also talk about solidify Tesla as the dominant car, not just because of electric or because of their charging network, but if they get to that place first, and it sounds like they probably will because they, they might have not the, get the first. data. No, nah, Waymo might get to your neighborhood first. Waymo is Google's company. They're already mm-hmm. driving in San Francisco with no humans in it, right? Mm-hmm. So I was in Austin and I saw a couple driving once without people too. Yeah, yeah. There so they're coming places. to cities, right? So the, Waymo might get there first, but the Tesla, because I went around America and did research for a, autonomous car com- for car companies. And I, I asked people, are you ready to get in a car without a steering wheel? Like no steering, like a, like a Waymo. Waymo right, has, right. you're not allowed to touch the car in a Waymo, right? Right, right. You're, you're, the car is driving. You're not allowed to touch it. Most people say, F- no. <laughs> like, no, I'm not ready for that. Yeah. You know, I, I, one guy in Kansas told me I'm a narcissistic control freak and there's no way a car, a computer is going to drive me around. Right? right, right. But then you start asking him, well, what if the car drove to you and gave you a choice, a manual driving or auto driving? Yeah. Oh, that's not a problem. I don't care about. I have the control then, the other, right? I don't care about the other people on the street. You know, <laughs> right. if they get threatened by a computer, no problem. But it, when I when I get it, I want a choice. Right? I want to be in control and. Mm-hmm. That'll go away. Google, by the way, had the data 10 years ago to know that guy's lying. He doesn't know he's lying, but he's, he doesn't know what he's actually going to do or she's going to do. And after three rides in an autonomous car, they change. Right. Consumer, it's sort of like getting a Vision Pro. All of a sudden, you change to like how you think about computing. But- right, right. I would. I think that. I mean, that, again, nothing would be better. I mean, that would be a major shift in my, you know, in the insurance world for sure. And nothing would make me happier than to see literally dramatic drops, you know, in in injury and fatality and and cost. I mean, everything goes down, right? Because all ins- all everyone's everyone's insurance premiums have been going up countrywide, and it's because we're driving like crazy. People are smashing into things like they never did before. More people are hurt. There's more damage to vehicles. The vehicles cost more money. So what happens? Premiums are higher and it's terrible. Yeah. So if, 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 if we have a potential to shift that and turn it on its ear, I am all for it. I do want to thank all of you for taking the time to listen today. I know insurance is not necessarily the most sexy concept. It's not the most exciting thing in the world. It is important that you understand what it is you're getting, what you should be looking for, red flags, you name it. You just need to know more than you used to. Things are more complicated than they used to be. If you have any questions, please reach out to me directly. You can email your questions to questions at insurancehour.com or call and leave a voicemail at 559 556-0317. Educating and entertaining Californians one insurance policy at a time. This is Insurance Hour. This show is dedicated to Shamrock Papa.